Uh, today I've got an interesting project. Um, this is a uh, Indonesian fiddler crab, uh, genus Uka. I don't know what species. There's a bunch of them. And I got a couple of these uh, at a pet shop. Actually, someone gave them to me. They were alive. People keep them in aquariums. And I thought they were cute, so I set up a little aquarium for them. And I, they didn't live very long. I'm afraid that um, they're not really well adapted to living in an aquarium. Uh, anyway, I certainly wanted them for my uh, marine invertebrate collection. Now, in preserving crustaceans, uh, you can't just pin them up like insects. Uh, they get rotten, and they get really stinky, and they get all discolored. Um, what I have been doing for crustaceans, especially larger ones, is uh, removing as much of the tissue inside as possible and then soaking them in alcohol, uh, which works well to preserve them, but it turns the shell red, like cooking a lobster turns it red. And so I've been trying to think of some way to preserve them without ruining the color. This one's kind of a nice bluish on black. and. Uh, so years ago, I uh, saw a uh, description of a preserving technique for spiders uh, uh, soaking them in ether. So I thought, oh, I'll just get some ether. Well, you can't buy ether. It's a restricted substance. So uh, I thought about it for years, and I, you know, I do uh, automobile work. I have vintage Volkswagens, and I've always got a can of starting fluid around, which is what you can use to start a car if you're working on it, and uh, I realized that the starting fluid is ether. So I thought, well, I can give this a try. So I had a can of starting fluid, and uh, this stuff is uh, very flammable and very toxic, and the, I had lost the, the spray tip on this one. So I turned it upside down in a jar and released all of the propellant, um, since the tube goes up to the top. Um, it just let all the propellant out, and once it was completely uh, discharged from repellent, and I just took a screwdriver and punched a hole in it here and drained the fluid out. Um, and it worked really well. I actually have already done this other crab with, uh, with the ether soak, and it came out really well. Now, <laughs> the, this is a aerosol can. It's got a propellant. It's toxic. It's flammable. This is not something you should do lightly. You should be careful about this. There was only a, a little bit left in this can anyway uh, when I did this. So whatever you do, be careful with this. Don't don't be foolish. All right. So when I'm preserving uh, larger crustaceans, I try to take as much meat out as possible. And you can actually lift the top off of this uh, crabs. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And then we're going to soak it in uh, ether. And uh, we'll see how it comes out. Now, I'm allergic to bugs. I can't eat them, and uh, their body fluids are, I have a strong allergic reaction to. And so, especially when I'm working on crustaceans like this, where I'm getting exposed to the body fluids, I wear gloves. Uh, it's pro also good to have these on if you're working with solvents, acetone or ether or something like that, to protect your skin from that. So, I use uh, an X Acto knife, and um, the uh, whole top part of a crab will come off. You, if you've ever been to beach uh, the ocean where there's crabs, you can see um, their shells when they molt. You can see the top part all comes off in one piece. So I'll get this X-Acto knife underneath this top part and between the legs and I can just go around like this. There's just a thin membrane that holds that together and it should come off real easily. Uh, yep, there it goes. You can lift that up. Now, you can see at least some of the gut in there. You can't um, get the muscles out of the legs because they're much too small. So I'll use tweezers and just reach in there and pull out as much of the guts as I can. See, there's some crab guts. In the larger crustaceans, I actually open up the legs and uh, pull the meat out. There's a sort of triangle shaped membrane in the joint of a leg right in where it flexes and you can cut that out and then get tweezers and reach up inside and pull the leg meat out 
which if you're trying to preserve anything large like that, it's important to get as much of the tissue out as possible. Uh, crustaceans, when they get rotten, boy oh boy, they just reek. Okay. I just took the whole piece right off. The tweezers in here and see what I can pull out. There's some gills in here. Yeah, here they are. Can pull the gills off. Just kind of, you know, clean it out as best you can. There's a little chamber here I'm opening up. Get as much of this tissue out of there as I can on this side too. Just break that open and get it out. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over to a sink and uh, run some water in here and that will um, rinse all of this out. I'm going to do that right now. There you can see that cleaned up really nicely. Now this great big claw has got some meat in it and uh, I want to clean that out. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this segment here off. And I can just take the X-Acto knife and stick it in and cut the little ligaments that are holding that in. This is much easier on a larger crab or lobster. Uh, if I just give that a tug, there, I can pull it right out. See, there's a bunch of meat. Get rid of all of that. I'm just going to take the exacto knife and just kind of scrape that off. Yeah. Uh, there's a piece of um, chitin here that's like the anchor for that. So I'm going to trim that off as well. At least make it a little smaller. So I don't really need all of that. There. I'll leave a little bit of it on there. Just to help anchor it in. Okay. Now, um, there's some meat inside of this claw, and I'm just going to take my fine tweezer and just reach inside and kind of scrape around, and I can reach up into this part too, and the curved end of this, and I'm just going to kind of scrape it loose. It's pretty mushy in there. And then I'm going to run some water in here too, just hold it under a sink and run some water. So I'll do that. All right. So I've got that all cleaned out, and the carapace is all cleaned out, and that just sits right on top of there. When I put it back together, the eyes fold the eyes in here, and then I can reattach this little bit of claw too. It's not really any meat in there. Okay. So here is my jar of ether. And I'm just going to drop this into the liquid. I'll put it in upside down there. And I'll take this piece and drop it in there too. Make sure that it's all submerged. The solvents will get into the legs and uh, work on that little bit of meat that's in the legs too. So. So there it is. Put it back on. Put this back outside, um, and I'll let it sit overnight, and then uh, we'll see how it comes out. All right. Now it's been about three days. I had some other stuff to do, and uh, I notice here on the towel there's a little bit of a red stain. When I took this out, some of the red from the claw has leached onto the claw. So that tells me that. If we soak it in ether long enough, it will bleach it out a little bit. And the shell's a little more bleached than the other one I did. But still, uh, I think this came out really well. It doesn't smell. It doesn't have a stinky smell to it. Um, I think it's going to work really well. So, with a crab this size, we don't have to glue the carapace back on. With a larger one, I would put some glue on it and glue it back on. But this one, I can just set it in place. Fits right on there. Now get a pin. Use a stainless pin on this one. About a three. And uh, this crab sits up just a little bit like this. So I'm going to set it in place and 
push the pin through. Try and get it nice and straight. Yeah, that looks good. And then uh, we have to put this pincer back into the claw, but that's not hard to do. There's a little uh, bumps on it. It should just kind of snap into place. Get it in there right. There. Yep, see? It snaps right in. <laughs> and uh, I'll move it over a little bit. And then we'll just get some pins and position the legs. Make it look like it's walking around. And again, the little tips of the feet have little claws so we can just stick that into the styrofoam, help hold, hold it in place. Like that. Stick that on. Bend the tip a little bit. There. Stick that in. This one in. Sort of lined up. Move this one forward a little bit. Okay. Oh, that looks pretty good. Now we'll open this small claw, just so we can see what it looks like. There. And uh, get a couple pins, brace this claw, and then the big one, I'm going to raise that up just a little bit. the claw up a little bit too. Oh, that looks pretty good. And then uh, let's straighten out the eyes a little bit too here. Now eye stalks, even they're alive, they're usually standing up pretty high like this. There. Maybe uh, reposition the legs a little bit. And use a pin to space them. A little kink here. There. The other one I did only took a couple of days to dry. Move this eye a little bit. Yeah. It looks good. Now, because I did one before, I have a finished one to show you. Uh, this is the first one that I did, and it's all dried out, and it really came out very nice. Uh, doesn't have any smell. Uh, kept most of the color. Uh, it's much better than if I had soaked it in acetone or alcohol. Uh, I'm really excited about this new process. I think it's going to be very useful. Now I have a collection of small crabs here in my teaching collection. And I do have a place for the fiddler crab. So I'm going to put it right over here. Yeah, 
and then we're going to take a pin and just brace it so that it'll stay in place. There. Makes a very, very nice addition. There's some other interesting crabs in here. Um, this is our local porcelain crab. It's from the Washington coast, northwest coast, Washington state. Uh, I love these. These are from the tropical Pacific. They're called elbow crabs, which is a great name for them. Um, this is a sponge crab. And this one has these legs of sort of turned up onto the back. And it would hold a sponge with those to cover up the body and camouflage it. Um, this is a ghost crab. So this would be a crab you'd see on a beach. It would have a burrow somewhere on the beach uh, up above the waterline. Uh, spider crab here, very long legs. That's a tropical Pacific one. Um, this one came from uh, Alaska. Somebody brought me that. This is a uh, Oregon uh, Cancer Orgonis, Orgonius, I think. So that's a local one. Uh, there's a little hermit crab down here. Local hermit crab. A uh, couple of lobsters, slipper lobsters. Uh, this is called a ghost shrimp. Lives in mud flats. They use them for bait. Uh, I bought this one at a bait shop. Uh, there's a couple of whale lice here that uh, I made another video about. Um, these are swimming crabs, and I don't really know anything about them, but all of their legs are are uh, flat for swimming. Usually, swimming crabs, just the back legs are flat for swimming, and these, they're all swimming. So those are intriguing. I think this is a male, and this is a female. Uh, so finally, now, I've, um, I've got a fiddler crab. Looks really good in there.